सच्चिदानंद रूपाय विश्वोत्पत्यादि हेतवे तापत्रय विनाशाय श्री कृष्णाय वयम् नुमः जन्मादियस्य यतोन वयादि तरचस चार्तेश्व भिग्न्यस्वरान तेने ब्रह्मरदाय आदि कवये मुह्यंति यत्सूरयः ते जो वारी मृदाम यथा विनिमयो यत्रत्र सर्गो मृषा धामना स्वेन सदानि रस्तकुहकम सत्यं परम धीमहि धर्म प्रोजित केत वोत्र परमो निर्मत सरानाम सताम वेद्यम वास्तव मत्र वस्तुशिवदम तापत्रयोन मूलनम श्रीमद् भागवते महामुनिकृते किं वा परेरीश्वरः सद्यो हृद्यवरुद्यतेत्र कृतिभिहि शुश्रुषु विस्तत्क्षणा Haryom, and greetings from Niagara Falls. Bhagavata describes or is the definition for Bhagavan. Bhagavan is the end. Bhagavata also describes Bhakti. If there's an ends, there has to be the means. Bhagavata also encompasses the bhakta, the one who is following the means to the ends. Why I'm sharing this with you 118 classes later <laughs> is that Bhagavata is helping us to experience Advaita. Advaita we know means oneness. What breaks up this oneness is the ego. And then we start to experience the Triputi. Triputi means a, a triad of experience where the experienced, the experiencing, and the experiencer are all different. When we are intimate with what Bhagavata means, Bhagavan, Bhakti, Bhakta, that triad becomes one. The ego becomes the spirit. This is our Purushartha. This is our purpose for this course, the purpose for our life. And this is most joyous. In some scriptures, moksha is described as a flower. Whenever we see Bhagavan's icons, Bhagavan is holding a flower. That flower symbolizes moksha. However, the final purushartha, or the fifth purpose, is bhakti. That is described as a fruit. As a fruit. Can you eat a flower? There are some edible flowers, but typically you can't eat a flower. You can enjoy a flower from the, a distance. Whereas a fruit, 
you can eat a fruit. Not that we do eat fruits, but you can eat a fruit. <laughs> can eat a fruit. And that's much more in intimate. You can internalize this. Please be clear of the vision of Vedanta and Bhagavata of Bhagavata. In the 11th skanda, in the second adhyaya, Shiva Sudeva is open and respectful that until he knows Bhagavan as Bhagavan, he will feel incomplete. And we should understand and appreciate the same. Until we know Bhagavan in full detail, we will always feel incomplete because we will always feel distant. Shiva Sudeva knows that Rishi Narada is one who knows Bhagavan in detail, is one who feels complete. So he asks Rishi Narada about Bhagavata Dharma. What is the way to integrate into Bhagavan? Rishi Narada starts to explain using precedent. He's sharing this as historically happened and why he's doing this to show to Sri Vasudeva that Bhagavata Dharma works. For all of us to have more belief and faith and trust in Bhagavata Dharma, we're going through so much precedent. Sri Vasudeva, Raja Nimi, In the third chapter, no, we're continuing with the second chapter. Raja Nimi asks, Atyantikam Shemam. He's asking all of the greatest people around him. Atyantikam means greatest. Shemam, goodness. What is the greatest? goodness, and he's not asking for himself only. He knows he will be included in this. He's asking for all. What is the greatest goodness for all? Before Rishi Narada, and then going back into precedent, Rishi Kavi. Before Rishi Kavi answers this for Raja Nimi, he says in verse 35, Dhavan, which means one can run. And how can they run? With their eyes closed. And what will happen? They will still not fall. That's what Bhagavata Dharma can do for us is that we can run with our eyes closed and never fall. And the implication of this is, when one is living in samsara, the way we are, samsara means that which is ever slipping. Now with our eyes open, we are slipping. And that too, we're doing this walking, not running, we are slipping. So imagine what Bhagavata Dharma can do for us. We can close our eyes. We can run and still not slip. In the earlier dialogue between Sri Vasudeva and Rishi Narada, Sri Vasudeva says to Rishi Narada, I know that Bhagavata Dharma muchate sarvato bhaya. I know Bhagavata Dharma will free me. Sarvataha means all. Bhayat from all fears. Now, Rishi Kavi shares what Bhagavata Dharma is. He shares all that you do, do for Bhagavan. All that you are, feel this is for 
Bhagavan. And what's really lovely, this is all shared in verse 36. The word karomi is not used. The word karoti is used. Typically, we use the word karomi, which means what I do. It is first person. But in this verse, it's karoti, what she does, what he does. Now, some of you are annoyed by this Sanskrit grammar. Here's what the implication of this is. Whenever you speak to someone you revere, in our culture, we speak to them in the third person. As an example, if I were interacting with Puja Swami Tejo Mayananda, I would not say, how are you? Because that's me identifying with the first person and him as the second person. Everyone's with me. But in this culture of reverence, I'm not his equal. We're dimensions apart. Me being the lower dimension. So I will ask, how is Guruji? Now, who's lost in this? Not him. The sense of I-ness is lost. Because I am not important. And that's why the word karoti is used. That's the level of intensity that all I do for Bhagavan, all I am for Bhagavan, that sense of minus and I-ness can't even be there. Karoti. Did everyone tune into that? You practice this in your day wherever you can, you refer to yourself in the third person. So as an example, <coughs> Vivek is hungry right, <laughs> right now. See how I'm disidentifying from Vivek being this limited entity. I'm describing myself in the third person. Less minus, less I-ness. In verse 39, how should one practice Doing all for Bhagavan, being all for Bhagavan, vilajja. Tell me what lajja means in the chat. There's many Hindi speakers here. What does lajja mean? There's lots of Hindi movies and songs <laughs> based on lajja. <laughs> Shy, bashful, coy. You know, I have my chunni in front of my eyes and then I'm looking at you. <laughs> Vilanja, recklessly, shamelessly, wholeheartedly. And this is natural because Ananya, there is no other other than Bhagavan. In a very gross or crude example, you have no shyness about your own body, correct? You with your own body, there's no shyness. Because there's no other, isn't it? I see this with our children. Shuka has more <laughs> vilajja than Vyasa in terms of his body. He's younger. He doesn't even identify with his body fully yet. When one is only feeling Bhagavan, and why are they feeling this? Because this is the only way. The only way to be complete, vilajja. I challenged all of our devis in devi culture to wear a tilak or bindi all the time. You go to work, you wear it. You go to the store, you wear it. Vilajja. That's a reminder for you to have your mind like Bhagavan. This is not just for the devis, it's for all of us. When someone asks you what your name is, you say it in Sanskrit or Hindi. My name is Vivek. It's not Vivek. It's not double V. It's Vivek. Why? That's part of the sadhana chatushtaya. It's that important. In verse 43, Bhajataha Anuvritya. 
which means practicing perpetually. So I'm coming back. What is the greatest goodness? That's the question. The answer, all you do for him. That will lead to all you are for him. What will be helpful? Feel there's only him, then there will no, not be any lajja. And finally, bhajata anuvritya, the one who's practicing this perpetually, what will they finally feel? What is the pala? What is the result? Shanti. One will feel joy. Isn't that what Sri Vasudeva wants? Isn't that what Raja Nimi wants? Isn't that what we all need? Joy. I want to make sure we're clear about how powerful this dialogue is. Raja Nimi is going to ask nine questions. Each of these rishis is going to give one answer and they all relate to each other. This is very much a valedictory address. Remember in this skanda, Bhagavan Krishna is going to become unmanifest. It's almost like when you graduate from high school or college, now you don't have that protection, correct? Of the culture of high school or college. So you have a valedictory address. Remember this. Live like this. Dharma is rightness. The beginning portion of Bhagavad Gita teaches dharma. Sat dharma, that was the middle of Srimad Bhagavatam, is refining this rightness to rightness with humility. Often I can engage in dharma with arrogance. Sat dharma is to dismantle that arrogance. So I go from rightness to humility. But the most profound sort of dharma is Bhagavata dharma. The evolution of humility is surrender. In Skanda 10, which is about ashraya, it is surrender with Bhagavan Krishna. All of his leelas are shared. So, this surrender becomes quite natural, insight in mind. But in Skanda 11, such wonderful teachings, it is surrender without Bhagavan Krishna. He's hardly come in these first two chapters, yes? That's how sadhana is. You have to shift your dependence from your sadguru from the Shastra, even from Bhagavan, to what? To yourself. To depend on Brahman. We continue. We are still in the second Adhyaya. And the dialogue is now shifting from Rishi Kavi to Rishi Hari. Raja Nimi will ask a question. Rishi Hari will answer. This is the 44th shloka. 11 to 44. Atta Bhagavatam Bhruta Yadharmo Yadrasho Nirnam Yatha charati yad brute, yer linger bhagavat priyaha, yer linger bhagavat priyaha. Atha, as in the next train of thought. Bhagavatam bruta, Rajanimi shares, please speak to me in more detail about 
the one who follows Bhagavata Dharma. Specifically, Yad Dharma. What is their nature? Yadrisho, Nirnam. How are they like in reference to other humans? Yatha Charati. How do they walk? Yad Brute. How do they speak? Yaihi lengaihi. What are the signs, the indicators, Bhagavat Priyaha, of the one whom Bhagavan feels is dear? Does this question sound like a question you've heard before? Who asks the question and who answers? Exactly. Best commentary on Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. Good. I'm glad everyone's in sync. In Bhagavad Gita's chapter 2, the teachings start with Jnana Yoga. And in that chapter, the teachings end with Jnana Yukta. The one who's completed practicing is now perfect. So the first question here is, how does one practice? Now, the second question is, what is perfection like? And now, Rishi Hari answers. Verse 45. Sarva bhuteshu yaf pashyet bhagavat bhava matmanaha Bhutani Bhagavat Yatman Yeshu Bhagavat Ottamaha Sarva Bhuteshu Yafpashit, the one who sees in all beings Bhagavat Bhava Matmanaha. They see that the spirit of all is Bhagavan. Bhutani. Bhagavat, Atmani, and that all beings are in the spirit, which is Bhagavan. Yeshu, Bhagavat, Uttamaha. The one who lives like this is the highest devotee. Does this sound like a teaching you've been exposed to. How magically Bhagavan Krishna is teaching us every morning and at least on Sunday mornings in the same way. You have been exposed to this already, so I'm going to read to you some of Puja Swami Tejomayananda's thoughts on the practicality, practicality of this. Liberation, as described in the 11th canto, brings an end to all our crying and complaining once and for all. Moksha is such that once it is attained, neither will we ever cry again, nor will anything in the world be able to make us cry. This is the only problem with <laughs> attaining moksha. Some people love to cry and are happy to receive sympathy from others. <laughs> Bhagavan Sri Krishna came to the earth to establish dharma. So until he teaches and disseminates spiritual knowledge, how can dharma be established? Dharma sustains all. Society can be sustained only when all beings love one another. Without love, there can be no sustenance or unity. We all talk big words about national integrity and unity, but then also harbor hatred toward each other. We may have innumerable slogans and shouts of national unity, but if we are unable to love each other, 
What is the use? How will we sustain our society and live together? Until we are able to know and understand each other, we will not be able to love each other. In truth, our own self alone is reflecting in everything. Without this knowledge of oneness, we will not be able to love all. Until we see our own self in others, we do not love all completely. Without love, we do not serve. The sum and substance here is that only the knower of oneness can establish dharma in the world. Was that practical? Rather than hearing and reading again and again and again, oneness in all, all in one, dharma is not possible, finally, without Advaita. The question is, what is the linga? What is the sign of one who is following Bhagavata Dharma? The foremost sign for the foremost bhakta, they are experiencing oneness. In comparison, now we're shifting to verse 46. Ishware tad adine shu, Balishe shu duishat sucha, Prema maitri krepo peksha, Yakaroti samadhya maha. Ishware to Bhagavan Adine shu. To ones who love Bhagavan. Bali Sheshu, to ones who are ignorant of Bhagavan. Dvishatsu, to ones who are enemies of Bhagavan. Everyone saw that attrition. Bhagavan, ones who are devoted to Bhagavan, ones who are ignorant of Bhagavan. Ones who are hating Bhagavan. How does one relate to them? Number one, prema. They love Bhagavan. Maitri, that's number two. Towards those who are devoted to Bhagavan, they are friendly. Number three, kripa. To those who are ignorant of Bhagavan, they relate to them out of compassion, in a compassionate way. And number four, to those who hate Bhagavan, upekshaha. Upekshaha means they are indifferent. Let me elaborate. The first insight in this verse is that all references are references into in or in regard to Bhagavan. Everyone's clear about that? Okay. The second insight, though, is one is now conditionally experiencing Bhagavan. That's why they're not uttama, which means highest. They're madhyama. They're in the middle. Uttama, there is oneness that is unconditional. Madhyama, it's become conditional. Wherever there's conditions, there are comparisons. And I've also shared, I think, in reference to last week, as long as there's a sense of separation, even in reference to Bhagavan, there will be bhaya or fear. What is shared in this verse is a really practical framework. 
How should we be with those who are ignorant of Bhagavan? We interact with them all the time with compassion. What we tend to do is belittle them. With those who hate Bhagavan, how should we be? Indifferent to not be affected by them, to be immune to them. And we have an ideal role model in Rishi Narada who lives like this. He helped Hiranyakashipu and Pralada, correct? He helped Kamsa and Devi Devaki. We have an ideal role model on how we should be with different types of people. In the next verse, verse 47, Sri Krishna will describe the prakrita bhakta, which means the lowest, the lowest devotee. Prakrita means one who is gross-minded. They're always immersed in prakriti. He shares in that verse, the lowest bhakta only feels Bhagavan in a murti. In a murti. That's verse 47. In verse 46, what I just covered, the intermediate bhakta feels Bhagavan in madhyama, in their own heart. That's what's indicated by they love Bhagavan. In verse 45, the uttama bhakta, is one who feels Bhagavan in Manava. Manava here means symbolizes all. See the attrition from Manava is best. Next best, Madhyama. Next best, Murti. In Meaningful Mornings, I shared this week, how many of you practice puja regularly by Shovan? Your mukhya puja, which means there's a preparation puja and there's a post puja, but the primary puja starts with avahanam. Everyone's seeing me. Left hand on your heart, right hand on the icon, on the murti. Why we do that when we offer puja, it's I've forgotten that Bhagavan lives in my madhyama, so I'm transferring Bhagavan to this murti. Then that murti comes to life. You welcome the murti, you feed the murti, and so on. The mukhya puja, the primary puja, is completed, though, with udvasana. With two hands, you gently push that icon back. Gently. You don't knock it over. <laughs> and the idea is that you're now transferring Bhagavan from the murti to your madhyama. If you've completed a puja, but you don't feel this presence in your madhyama, then you've not offered puja. These lingas, these indicators are important for our own practice. In Puja Swami Tejomaina, this bhasha, and in many discourses, he has shared this story about Rishi Ekanatha in Maharashtra. Once he and a group of disciples were traveling from Varanasi to Rameshwara. There's a tradition where you take water from <coughs> Varanasi, that is the Ganga, and then you offer this at Rameshwara, where Bhagavan Rama leaves to go to Langa. And as they were traveling, they saw this donkey that was dying. It was having spasms and just really imploding, eyes coming out, tongue coming out. And what Rishi Ekanatha did is he gave that donkey the water that he had collected from Varanasi. 
and that donkey was saved and all of the other people were judging him saying, you brought that water just to give to this donkey. And immediately, who manifested? Bhagavan Shiva. Is Rameshram a physical place? Rameshram is in all. Please keep such verses, such stories in your personality that the traje trajectory is to go from Prakrita, which most of us are, to Madhyama, to Uttama. And now I'll share final thoughts on a practical way to do this. I'm on verse 50. Nakama karma bijanam yasya chetasi sambhavaha vasudeve vasudeve kanilayaha save bhagavatottamaha. The one without kama karma bija. Bija here means avidya or vasana. Yasya chetasi sambhavaha. This doesn't grow in them. Why? Vasudeva eka nilayaha. Does anyone know what nilayaha means? Home. In their personality, there is a home, and that home is only for Vasudeva for Bhagavan Krishna. Savai Bhagavat Uttamaha. Such is the sign of the Uttama Bhagavataha, the one who is practicing in the best way. In verse 44, the question is asked. Everyone's with me? What is the linga? That is the indicator of one who's following question number one, Bhagavata Dharma. From verse 45 to 55, 11 signs, lakshanas are given. Just like in Bhagavad Gita. I've already told you the signs from verses 45, 46, and 47. Correct? Best, middle, lowest. Now I'm going to give you in very simple ways, the signs of the rest, the rest of the verses. In verse 48, the sign is they do not react. In verse 49, they are not confused. Now verse 50, there is no print. Print here means Vasana, yes? My print makes my kama, that is desires, which makes my karma or action. And I've shared this with all of you before. The word hrit means heart. But we always expand this to hridaya, which means heart is. Heart is what? Heart is this body. Heart is this home. But I told you it should be Hrit Krishna, correct? <laughs> if Bhagavan Krishna is living in your Madhyama, there's no space for vasanas or kama or karma. Yes? That's how we should feel, that there's no space. Vasana, see ya. <laughs> You're getting your eviction notice. <laughs> in verse 51, there's no arrogating, no arrogance. In verse 52, no possessiveness, no possessiveness. Verse 53, no distraction. Not even for a moment is there a forgetfulness of who is living in their heart. Verse 54, no burning, no burning. 
We're always burned by this sense of incompleteness. And verse 55, which is the final teaching from <coughs> Rishi Hari, he shares that the Bhagavat Uttama, the best devotee, is one who's tied Bhagavan in their heart. And this is so such a beautiful visual that Bhagavan can't escape. <laughs> but even if Bhagavan wanted to, Bhagavan can't escape anymore. So they've tied them, tied him in their heart. So 11 indicators are shared. In summary, Bhagavat Bhava. The first question was about Kshema, that is goodness. And the answer, Bhagavat Dharma. All you do for him, all you are for him. The second question, Linga. And the answer is, Bhagavat Bhava, to feel not all that you are is for him, but you feel him. You feel him in your heart. Shandi, Shandi, Shandi.